This is a small demonstration of a project that uses a GPS receiver, a small OLED display with an embedded processor on a small development board to display GPS coordinates and other GPS information uh, and also to or has the ability to log those GPS coordinates at one second intervals uh, for use by programs such as uh, Google Earth and such and Google Maps to show the actual GPS path. The application uses a simple graphical user interface to set and change options. The options are shown in this in this block always um, and it uses a small joystick, five position joystick, up, down, left, right, and a center fire button uh, to select the options. Uh, the options are scrolled. You can just hold the option or the button one way or the other and it scrolls through the options and loops back around to the beginning and just keeps on going at half second intervals. Same thing uh, for going the other way. Uh, the first option is the night day option that changes the screen contrast uh, in night uh, mode. It's a dark background with contrasting text. Day mode is a lighter background with dark text. You can see that this doesn't film very well uh, as a reason it normally comes up in night mode. The next option is 24 hour or 12 hour time. You can see that the time of day here shows in 24 hour time by default. You can change that to 12 hour. It shows the AM PM indicator. Again, the options hold when you move back and forth. Move back, it always shows the current value. If you change it to 12 hour, move off, and then come back, it'll show the current value. And you can just press the fire button to toggle between the options. The uh, mile per hour has to do with both the speed here and also the altitude here. Uh, in miles per hour, it also shows the altitude in feet. If you change that to kilometers per hour, or a metric, it shows it in kilometers per hour and changes the altitude to meters. The nav screen, or the nav uh, satellite screen, the screen that you're looking at here is the actual navigation screen. You can switch by pressing the button to the satellite screen which shows the current satellites being tracked, total number of satellites, total number of channels, and also shows a polar graph of the actual location, the elevation and azimuth of the actual satellites being tracked. If you imagine yourself standing at the center of the circle and looking uh, any direction, north, west, south, or east toward the horizon, the rings represent the center point represents the horizon, the rings represent 30, 60, and 90 degrees above the horizon, 90 degrees being directly overhead. So for example, if you're looking at this satellite, whoops, if you're looking at this satellite, you'd look generally north at about 60 plus uh, degrees above the horizon, and that's where the satellite would be located. This is not critically important to the operation of the system, but it might be handy for some, for, uh, for some people's use. The table here shows the satellite number and the signal to noise or uh, relative signal strength of the uh, satellites being tracked. These only, these only show satellites that have a signal to noise ratio above zero. Otherwise, of the satellites, for example here, seven satellites in view, only in this case uh, five are being tracked. And, that, and this screen updates on a five second interval. Switch back to the nav screen. Again on the nav screen, just to show what's here, this uh, changing value here is the actual uh, NEMA sentences that are being uh, read. Uh, there's four types, and it shows which one is currently being read. shows the total number of satellites in view. This is the uh, time, the date, latitude, longitude, uh, speed, uh, heading, altitude, and this is the sector number that's either being written or will be written when logging starts and we'll get into that in just a moment. You also have a very simple compass with north at the top, south at the bottom, east and west. The pointer actually shows the uh, heading, the current heading, and that's updated every second. You also have a small 
uh, speedometer which uh, shows uh, 0 to 90 units whether it be miles per hour or kilometers per hour it, it, it shows 0 to 90 on there just as a relative type of thing. Okay, beyond the nav uh, the system is currently not logging but you can press toggle this on and start logging information and it will log by default it will log every one second latitude and longitude in a format consistent with KML files for uh, Google Earth to show uh, paths dynamically in Google Earth. Um, it's set up by default to only log when the system is moving so when the speed is zero uh, it doesn't log in which case it's not logging right now you would normally see a flashing indicator here in the uh, bottom left hand corner of the screen at one second intervals while it was logging if we turn logging off it actually updates uh, the date and time stamp and sets sets us up so we start logging uh, the next log will log in uh, in um, sector one of the thing again we can turn it on turn it off the next log will start in sector two and so on uh, with a this this particular display currently has a 64 meg micro SD card installed in in the display which you can't see it's back here but with but with a simple 64 meg the smallest we could find actually uh, for the display micro SD um, you can log about 40 days of GPS data at one second intervals. The format commands uh, allow you to change the format that the latitude and longitude is displayed. Uh, format 3 is the format generally used by Google Earth which is degrees and decimal degrees to four places in this case with the north-south indicator uh, for latitude and the same for longitude but with an east-west indicator. Format 1 which is the default for the display is degrees, minutes, seconds and tenths of seconds. Format 2 is degrees, minutes and decimal minutes to four decimal places. And again like like the options themselves the individual uh, formats. If you just hold down the fire button it will just scroll through the options at half second intervals and you can just stop when you reach the one that you want to see. The You can change the way the dates display. The default is day, month, year but for those who prefer you can change it to month, day, year uh, if that's more convenient and what you're generally accustomed to looking at. Whether it's the US format or the way the rest of the world looks at it. You can also set standard and daylight savings time. Uh, this is done manually because some people don't use it. Uh, the default is standard time. Uh, you can see here that it's in 24 hour time. We can change that to daylight savings time which basically just adds an hour to the time and we can change that back anytime we like. And again like we saw before if you change it to 24 hour time then change it back, change it to daylight savings it just changes right there and your option is actually remembered from the last time you uh, you changed it that's about it uh, the system is actually set up on a uh, on a development board which I will back up here and show you briefly the board has mounting facilities for the display which can be the uh, 96 by 64 uh, pixel display the 128 by 128 display or in this case the 160 by 128 display the display is about 1.7 inches diagonal and uh, has a, um, a small processor built in that's actually doing all the calculations here there's no separate uh, microprocessor involved in this uh, again here's the um, the little joystick that, that uh, we use to control the interface this is a, uh, a USB to serial bridge and this is just a prototype area and you can see here the cable coming in this, act, this cable actually comes in from the GPS it's a four wire cable it's about four feet and the the GPS receiver is on the other end of it it uses a parallax 
GPS receiver uh, in uh, in raw mode rather than smart mode, and uh, I use it on a cable because that allows me to put it in a uh, in a south facing window without a screen on there for better reception.